I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, Kiki of Kiki and Her. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I know. How do you like my rap? Ooh. You see, what I'm doing tonight is, is we're having sort of a storytelling uh, half hour, Ooh. and uh, I thought it would be appropriate to put on a robe Ooh. and, you know, have some hot cocoa. <laughs> it's kosher. <laughs> Take that, Mel Gibson. <laughs> and just have a good old time and, you know, gather around old friends like Pancho Joe and Mr. Clown. Hi, hi guys. How you doing? Hi. And tonight, we are featuring those new stars of Broadway, Kiki and Herb. We've been on the comeback trail ever since, and it led us to this bright, very spot right here on the stage of the Helen Hayes Theater on Broadway. Ah, thank you very much. They have a limited run show over at the Helen Hayes Theater, and you better go run and see it fast, because they got some of the best, most rave reviews of the year. Can you believe it? We're a hit! So don't miss this legendary musical duosome. Cast them before they die. <laughs> That's right. We'll be taking you on a trip through memory lane with the Kenstery of one of my all-time favorites, Kiki and Herb. Now, they first took New York by storm, and then they took the world by storm. Oops. <laughs> the cover fell off. <laughs> Actually, this is just a prop, you know. I'm just too lazy to memorize my true life history that my crack writing team has made up for me. <laughs> Let's start the story. <laughs> when I first moved to New York, I caught this doublé performing one of their terrific downtown cabaret style shows and was immediately wowed and terrified all at the same time. Sort of like when Liza tried to clock me with the microphone. Can, you're, you're awfully close to me, I'm worried. Or told me she liked my show. And I love the show! Or hit those high notes and God bless the child. <laughs> Soon I was shocked to see that this sort of punk cabaret dyad would be performing an off-Broadway show entitled Kiki and Herb, Kuri Teatre, or however you say it. Welcome to our Kuri Teatre. It was during this time that we first met. Hi, we're Kiki and Herb. And you're watching That's Kentertainment. And it turns out they weren't so terrifying after all. You're so nice. Who knew? Who knew? Just terrifyingly talented. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Perfect blend of great storytelling and showbiz pizzazz. <laughs> Candy was mother's girl. I was daddy's girl. My father loved me. I always said, if you weren't molested as a child, you must have been an ugly kid. <laughs> and I like it. Not long after, word came of the early demise of this dynamic duo, and all of New York society showed up to pay tribute. And this morning, we know precious little, except that Kiki and her are gone. We're accustomed to hearing what a tragedy they died so young. Not applicable here. Hey. Well, not done yet, boy. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming to us. Wasn't true. <laughs> Probably just some ruse to keep the creditors off their backs. You know, that's how you do it in New York. Pretend you're dead, or in my case, just do a weekly cable access show. <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> 
So everyone who came here today, you know, expected that you know you had died. So do you feel as though you've left your fans down by being alive? <laughs> yeah, that's a very interesting question. I've been asking myself that question for years. <laughs> so the name of the show is Kiki and Herb. Will well, die will they die wrote for that you. down. I didn't choose we, that was title. Just all, all of a sudden, yeah, it says on the we're dying. Kiki and Herb will die for you. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to think, hey, maybe Something's someone's got a on. plan. Yeah. There might be a marketing scheme, and I might be doing my encore in a couple of concrete boots, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if anything happens, you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. They want me to. Next up was their legendary sold out concert at Carnegie Hall entitled Kiki and Herb Will Die for You. Wow! Oh my goodness. Turning inside out, turning inside out, tell me why I. Petrified. Oh, my friend, we're older, but no wiser. For in our hearts, the dream is still the same. The oh, oh, days, my friend, we thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance forever and a day. That was amazing. Carnegie Hall, I mean, it's nice. Did you ever think playing someone's basement several years ago, suddenly now, Carnegie Hall? It was the only <laughs> performance I ever did where I wasn't nervous because I felt like I was destined. It was the, it my was life destiny. was exactly where it was supposed to be at that moment. Every person I love in my life was in the room, and if they weren't there, I don't love them. <laughs> or they're dead. They're dead to me. <laughs> you know, the fact that they made it here shows that... Um, if you stick around long enough, you'll make it. <laughs> but it was to be a short-lived reunion, as Kiki and Herb were contractually obligated to die after the performance. We don't want you to go anywhere, but I know you got your life to do and all that, so any, any part just remember got our life just, to do. Yeah, just remember Jesus came back, and so could we. And Kiki's definitely got a messiah complex. Yeah. Any last words, then, for your fans? We Thank love you. you. We love you. And if I only could, I'd make a deal with God, and I'd get him to swap our places. I'd be running up that road. I'd be running up that hill. I'd be running up that building. So that was the end of Kiki and Herb. Or was it? I mean, there were no bodies to be found, and just like all great soap operas, just because someone dies doesn't mean they're actually dead. Ooh. You know, it usually just means they asked for too much money and uh, they got kicked off, but then they got desperate and came back again. Oh. oh. Well, something smelled funny to me, and I followed a familiar stench all the way to London, England, where I found a certain someone incognito, <laughs> but still plugging away. Hello, I'm Justin Bond, and I'm standing outside of the Retro Bar here in London, England. It's my local pub, but I'm here tonight to tell you about my exciting new CD uh, that uh, is coming out. Well, you can get it on CD Baby starting in December, and then it will be released by Ryko Disc, I believe, in February. Kiki and Herb live at Carnegie Hall. If you couldn't get into the real thing, listen to the record. The uh, opera critic from The New Yorker said that I was better than Callis. Although, you know, it was after the show. It's probably true, but 
You'll just have to buy the CD and figure it out for yourself. Merry Christmas. It's not Christmas time. Well, enjoy yourself anyway. <laughs> Amazed at my discovery, but determined to keep the secret, I returned to the States and immediately aired it on TV. <laughs> this then led me to the trial of her. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> trail. <laughs> There's a typo in here. <laughs> Crack writing team. Anyway, this then led me to the trail of Herb, who was going under the assumed name Kenny Melman. Ooh. <laughs> Kenny, clearly after one of his idols. <laughs> and I don't mean Kenny Rogers. <laughs> ah! But to throw people even further off the tracks, Herb was determined that no one was to discover his sobriquet by declaring, Kenny Melman is Grace Jones. <laughs> that did the trick. I lost control again. Then she screamed out. Then, the day came for the release of the Kiki and Herb at Carnegie Hall CD. Now, word started getting out that there would be a special surprise at the CD listening party. Would the fans be getting a free copy of the legendary evening that so many couldn't get tickets to? Would it be? Could it be? Well, no. <laughs> Turns out that Herb admitted that he was alive and well and surprised everyone with a special performance that evening. And Kentertainment was there for the scoop. Welcome to the CD listening party of Kiki and Herb live at Carnegie Hall. Thank you for coming. Before you kiss me, you should know. My papa was a rodeo. Two Kennys, ladies and gentlemen. Two. Yes, two. Two yeah. is better than one. Maybe not. Well, yeah. two is more than one. <laughs> well, yeah, see? See how yeah. smart they are? Yeah. All right, so Kenny, tell us a little bit about what's going on tonight. Well, we're having a little CD listening party in anticipation of a February 1st release of Kiki and Herb live. No, Kiki and Herb at Carnegie Hall. Yes. We're not allowed to say live. Why is that? Carnegie Hall says no anymore. Like, for some reason, after, like, the 1970s, they said no one can say live at Carnegie Hall. Really? Yeah. So if actually <laughs> little things you learn when you try to put out a CD. Well, I'm friends with Justin and Kenny, um, and uh, and have been big fans of them for a long time. Um, and Victoria Leacock, who produced the uh, the album or the disc, I should say, uh, is my best friend. And as the evening wore on, there were even more surprises. This is a really fun night and all, but uh, even though and we love you and adore yeah. you, it is kind of bittersweet because, you know, who's not here? Well, yeah, Justin is not here. No, he's tucked and, uh, away somewhere yeah, in Well, he's off in class. London, yeah, in a stenography class. It's like a fight he often jokes that it's a stenography class, <laughs> but I'm glad that it's not. No, me too. Isn't everybody really? Well, the, you know, those images of, like, court TV where you do see the court stenographer would be a lot more entertaining if Justin was in them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, being a sinner. Yeah. Is that what it is? When you're a sonography class, you're a sinner? Is that it? Sin, yeah, maybe. Yes, the study of sin, sonography. <laughs> well, if anyone should be. Oh! You bitches are drunk. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, it's a it's Christmas. Justin Bond. Oh! Jo Justin, what are you hey. doing here? Well, it turns out <laughs> yeah. that I actually showed up to surprise everyone. Oh, thank you all for coming. This is a surprise for me. <laughs> Maybe a surprise for you, but I think we must all thank my mother for chipping in yeah. my plane ticket, <laughs> which I just bought on Saturday, and, and I, because I was a little lonely over in London. Well, that happens. So it's good to be home in my schoolboy haircut. I mean, I was going to surprise Kenny tonight, but I called him last night because yeah. I wanted to talk to him. It was like 9.30, 10 o'clock. So, you know, it was less than it was a surprise when I called him last night and said I was in New York. It's amazing. Well, I have to I mean, say, but like, I am still a sinner. Oh yeah, big sinner. Yeah, well, as you should be. And I'm not Kiki tonight, but I, I did wear this rhinestone pin of a um, what you call it, a pin and a a pin of a pin and a bowling ball because we set them up and we knock them down. You know what I'm knock saying? Knock them yeah. down. Ah. Ha, ha, ho. Girl, I'm 
snow. Where do you go to find the someone who will do? Not for long. <laughs> now, we all knew that the smell of the greenback dollar couldn't keep Kiki away for long, even if in a schoolboy disguise. And now it was official. Kiki and Herb were alive and well, performing for the masses. You know, uh, for example, when uh, Kiki, oh, I mean Justin, <laughs> performing at the Brilliant Mistake concert for Friends Indeed. And performing together, like when they hosted the 2006 HX Awards at Lincoln Center. So I was gonna say sit back and relax, but just stand there and try to enjoy yourself. Hello, Kiki. How are you? Hi, sweetheart. I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, much better after seeing your <laughs> marathon uh, award show tonight. Thank you. We're a fantastic presenter. Oh. For best play, best musical, our Ken Clymer, uh, that's Kentertainment, an old friend of mine. Uh, love that's Kentertainment. And Julie Love from Project Thank you very much. Yeah, nothing like saying theater's dead to get the crowd going. And then naming a lot of shows that no one ever heard of. <laughs> if they've been out more. Well, now, speaking of shows, wow, what a segue is this. I understand you're going to be coming to the Broadway. That's what they say. I'm happy to do it. I mean, you know, people ask me, Kiki, why are you going to Broadway? And the main answer is because, you know, we, we died. We were a bizarre farewell show at Carnegie Hall. But unfortunately, a year or so has gone by. I don't have any money. And, uh, you know, there's no universal health care in this country. And to be perfectly honest, I'm sick. If we had universal health care in this country, Kiki wouldn't need to be on Broadway, would she? I could be living somewhere, being looked after, having soft meals brought to me by stout women three times a day. But I've got to work. I've got to be able to pay for health care. And so, therefore, thanks to the fact that there's no universal health care in the United States, I'm forced to play Broadway. I cannot think of a better reason to play Broadway. You know, some people were killed to play Broadway, but you're basically doing it because you're being killed. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be killed by playing Broadway. <laughs> well, Seven shows a week for a woman my age, ooh. that's a lot to ask for. Yeah, where's it going to be at? It's, do you know? At the Helen Hayes Theater. Oh, perfect. Well, what a great... Yeah, well, it will be perfect. <laughs> I didn't mean it when I said I didn't love you so Should I be alone, but I never should have let you go I was nothing, I was stupid, I was foolish, I was lying to myself Basically, there's nothing to talk about because well, you've done it all and it's all there over. And, and, and you can, you know. thank you. And yeah. I just wanted to make sure people knew you were still alive I'm after. We're here. still alive, yeah. yeah. It's kind of brilliant. Anyway, as a recap of our Kenstery tonight, Kiki and Herb have been on this show more times than anyone cares to remember, <laughs> especially our lazy writers. <laughs> so without further ado, here's all the latest stuff about Kiki and Herb on Broadway, starring at the Helen Hayes Theater in Kiki and Herb, We Has Risen. Wow! Yay! To the magic door! <laughs>
everyone. Again. It's Kiki and Herb Hi. again. Now you two have gone off, and now you're going on. Did you ever think you'd be playing the Broadway? I'm always going off. I can't help it. It's part of why I have to be on medication. I think we always belonged on Broadway. I think we've always belonged on Broadway as well. In my mind, I've always been on Broadway. I've certainly walked up and down the street often enough. <laughs> every time we're on Broadway. Every time, every show it's is opening night. It's right, Broadway is a state of mind. But in the true aging diva, I had to sound it out, fashion, they keep giving shows unable to leave the stage. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful, ladies and gentlemen? So, you know, we're not going to tell you why we didn't die. That alone is worth the price of a Broadway ticket. Now you two, you know, I mean, I suppose after Tina Turner and Patty Duke are probably the world's foremost showbiz survivors. I don't what? think after. Uh oh, before. Before. Patty Duke and Tina Turner certainly could have taken a few pages, pages out of yeah. Kiki's book. <laughs> what do you attribute to your longevity through the, you've transcended the ages and the sounds of the ages? I think we just got a lack of health care. You I've just got to keep going. I've had my leg chopped off and it just grows back. <laughs> Caterpillars, you cut in half and they just grow into two ones. That's it. And fortunately, they've tried to fuse us, but it hasn't Didn't worked. Work out. Can you imagine no yeah. legs, just a kiki and herb torso and head stuck together in the middle? Wouldn't that be awful? Be, awful. be like be some, some sort act. of crazy rattle. Yeah, we'd be good, you know. Be on the, I don't think we'd be on Broadway. We'd be on a different circuit than that one. That's right. Now, coming back on the Broadway, I mean, you two have pulled off a feat that only, I think, Jesus Christ himself have pulled off coming back from the dead. Not and you smell better from what I hear. Oh, no, don't get too close. Today. We well. smell better than Jesus. Thank you, sweetheart. So. You Isn't should put that, that on your lovely. posters. Smell Kiki and Herb smell better than Jesus. Ken Clyburn. <laughs> That's nice. And you said, this is the first day of my life. I know you don't usually like to give away your uh, secrets of the show or what's coming up, but anything that uh, the fans out there could look forward to when you hit Broadway? Well, we haven't really thought about Broadway yet. I mean, <laughs> we're not, we haven't really planned the show. It's still, what, two, three weeks away. Anything could happen to you. <laughs> Anything could happen. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You might <laughs> end up doing it live via satellite from Beirut. Exactly. Oh, yeah. They might need us other places. <laughs> I don't know where I am, don't know where I am. Kiki and Herb, you're alive, that's what it's called. We're huh? alive, We're on, alive Broadway. on Broadway. It's risen. Forever young, I want to be forever young. Do you really want to live forever? Forever Nice to see you. Good to see you too. Now you just came from Kiki and Herb. What are your thoughts? Well, it's a it's a big night for downtown kids, and they're a legend. They are ten years in the making, and they're a huge success overnight. It's a big big deal tonight. Oh man, what a show! And do you think anyone out there on Broadway will ever th get this political now or anywhere in the near future? Well, that's what's so great about it. You get a, a downtown act. They're original. It's not a remake, right? It's, it's not a cover song. They, they got something to say, the young kids of today. And they, they came up and they're Broadway and, they got a, and people are going to listen to the show. And this is a big night. It is such a thrill, a delight, and an unexpected pleasure for us to be here on Broadway. <laughs> I, I love Kiki and Herb. I've been a fan for many, many years. So I, I enjoyed it very much. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing to see this. What do you think about uh, Kenny's musical direction? He can't hear you. He's brilliant. <laughs> Oh 
my God, we saved the best for last. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Kiki and Herb. It's so hot in here, the hottest night on Broadway, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, I love these, these intimate interviews. I got your tip. You do. I'm, I'm, I've got a tip in my hand. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. What's I, happening? Well, oh, apparently I'm being final, but that's okay, because it's your opening night on Broadway. Yeah. So, kind of stupid for me to ask, but, so what's going through your minds right now besides pure insanity? All I know is that I'm feeling someone up right now. And you know, sometimes people tell me I have nice legs and I always tell them, I got my mother's legs and my father's tits. And I'm glad you don't have my mother's tits or I'm my father's tits. I'm glad we have a show off. Yeah, I'm glad no. we have, yeah, that's, that's perfluous. I think now that we're Broadway stars, we could just be really forward and molest yeah. people and take so. advantage of any rotten situation to humiliate people and say, no, what are you thinking? Don't shrink away. I'm grabbing your boob and I'm a Broadway star. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. That's the Broadway way. Yeah. And I don't care if you don't. And I don't want it if you don't. And I won't say it if you don't. And I won't play it if you don't play it. Set up a three pop but up You guys had like what, four previews? Is that oh, it? Yes. Which is unheard of in Broadway history, well, from what I understand. We're a director. We're like, you know, we're forces of something. <laughs> we're forces of retardation. Sink or swim, whatever. I'd rather. I don't give a shit whether I sink or swim, yeah. as long as something's happening. Right. We're mostly about swimming. There are wars going on all around the world. We're fighting a war in the Middle East. People are dying. People are being exposed to explosions and violence nonstop. And there is a war. I mean, I don't plan on doing anything about it. <laughs> and I'm sure most of you don't either. But ladies and gentlemen, the least we can do is worry out of respect. Well, I hear you guys have got the raves all across the board. I mean, literally all across the board. Like the New York Times wrote, Kiki and Herb are not crapping it up on Broadway or something like that. Are not what? Are not crapping it up on Broadway. I'm I paraphrasing. Heard it. I haven't seen it. I, 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 everyone's talking about it, but we don't get to hear it. We're crapping in the alley. You know, we're doing our show where um, Jackie, Jackie Mason, Mason did his show. And oh, evidently, every I'm night during the drink. intermission, Sorry. he peed in the alley. No. So we're actually out smoking in Jackie Mason's pit. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I think over the years we've covered like every single topic, so I can't really think of anything else to talk about besides welcome to Broadway. Thank you. Thank we you. Thank you. Very much. And we love you Thank too. You.